I, I would agree with you, Sandrish. I think I would give a small edge to Ruda, but as you said, this is this is this is a mirror. Their lists are very close to to each other, so you know the small differences might not really come to um, to influence the match as much. Small, a small, um, uh, small advantage to Turuda here, as you said. You know, having a bit more, I would say, a bit more tuned list, and and just shown time and time again today that he knows how to play the deck and knows how to play it well. Yeah, so we'll I think see. The mirror and... uh, is all about uh, board presence. Uh, sometimes players can uh, outrace the other. But most of the time, it's more like someone gets a Werewolf Pack Leader going, uh, Old Growth Troll, and maybe some Blizzard Brawl here and there. And that's how you uh, eventually win. Uh, uh, it's very hard for one player to just uh, destroy the other. But I do like the, the this open of Ruda on both pack leaders here because if he draws a, a third snow land, he can just uh, clear the way and attacks for drawing a card. Hmm. Unfortunately for Ruda, I think we have seen a mulligan to six or even maybe to five. The, they are definitely lone cards here. So, but they they have the pack leaders, so those are great ways to to get back of the game. I mean, the pack leader already a great creature. Like uh, two mana three three is already. Uh, above the curve, and then every time you get to draw a card from back leader, it's just like chef's kiss. You know that is the best thing you can do. You have your two, you have your oversized two drop drawing your cards. That is just like magic Christmas land, and it is Christmas. So we'll see if that happens here for for Ruda drawing maybe even a couple cards from these back leaders. They might be able to. Yeah, it snowballs really quick, uh, Daninja, and yeah, Ooh. he he got the third land, so this is gonna be a huge turn right now. This he is gonna destroy. be a massacre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's funny how one draw uh, just separates you from uh, just being totally screwed to okay, I'm winning the game right now. So also, I, I like the decision of Ruda of not killing the Sculptor of Winter the last turn. Because uh, in, on the standard, it, it's very common play pattern that you kill uh, the Sculptor of Winter so your opponent uh, don't go for uh, Eskis Cherish. But Eskis Cherish isn't a big deal here because it, it, it's one of the few nerfed cards on, uh, on Alchemy Formage. And it, it's not about the, that card, the game, anymore on the Mono Green's Mirror match. It's more about uh, smaller creatures and maybe uh, being aggressive and making your board uh, really strong. I like the fact that Ruda uh, can pressure, especially with the inscription of abundance on, on hand, because it, it's a card we, we said that could be the difference on the, the first mm. game, because he, he has access to two copies while uh, his opponent doesn't. And also something that I see that, that that I see that's paying really well for Ruder here is the fact that uh, he was willing to mulligan more aggressively than his opponent. Uh, we saw Emiliano keeping a hand of five lands, Ranger class, and Werewolf Pack Leader. And mm. while it's not like okay, you definitely should mulligan that hand, it's not a great hand and. He got punished drawing uh, a bit more extra lands and just being overall just overwhelmed by his opponent. Yeah, one thing one thing I'd love to to see here in this game is 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 to have Garrick enter the battlefield. We we've seen a lot of modern green matches in the top eight here, but we haven't actually seen Garrick on the battlefield yet. And that is a card which I haven't played with myself yet. So I would like to see how how it actually works in the game and what kind of advantage the player can get from it. Definitely a bit worse on the draw because you might be a bit on the back foot. But I would love to see Garrick making some. Uh, make an appearance and <laughs> now we have two of them in hand so I, I i assume we're gonna see at least one of them but yeah on the draw being on the back foot might be a little bit uh slowish here for Ruda. we'll see yeah all my experience with monogreen uh the plants walkers are really great on the mirror mat especially when the the board kind of stalls so you can generate some card advantage but um Oof. 
I do think Garruk is a bit uh, of underpowered sometimes because you you, you can generate um, some dudes from his spell book, but mm. usually, especially in the mirror match, the dudes will be smaller or not that relevant. So uh, it, it's not a card that would stay uh, for the mirror match mostly, uh, especially on the draw when it's yeah. hard to protect. I agree with that. I think on the play it can be still good, but on the draw it might be a little bit too slow because you you might not be able to protect the Garak to survive more than one turn, and then you might need to like chum block to protect it, and that's not a great position to be in. And yeah, we're seeing we're basically seeing exactly what we've seen in game one, but now it's from Sekker's side, it's just like completely really running over Ruda, and Ruda just doesn't really have much they can do. Like they can try their best, but we both see the battlefield, we both see the hands, there's just like nothing that uh, Ruda can do realistically to uh, to have a better chance to win this. The only thing yeah. that either player could have done in their games was just maybe mulligan a bit more aggressively. That was the only thing that they could have influenced and otherwise they're just, uh, it's a mirror match and the opponent has uh, the advantage of the play and, and they have a better hand. There's nothing in, you can do in these situations, unfortunately. Yeah, and... being on the play is really strong here, and uh, we, we see Ruda really punish it here, drawing the Blight Blade. Uh, on the turn, he would drop Garruk. Sometimes when you, you're being smashed down, you can just drop a Planeswalker and hope your opponent spare you some life by attacking right. the Planeswalker. <laughs> yeah. uh, but since he, he drilled the, the Blight Blade and was able to just clean the pack leader, uh, and prevent uh, his opponent from drawing extra cards. He he chose that way, and yeah, he he just that here. He yeah, the trample might blocks. might spell yeah. doom here for Uda. Doesn't matter where he blocks, he just dead. Yeah, too many four four tramplers on on Sekker's side, and and we're gonna be seeing game three here. Uh, hmm. Also, the leashes of Mono Green Alchemy, I do think they push for a more aggressive gameplay because one of the cards that hmm. caused the board to stall on standard Mono Green matches is Eska's Chariot and to some extent uh, Ren 7 on the sideboard. And hmm. none of those cards are being seen right now uh, on players' lists. They don't have Eska's Chariot, they don't have uh rain saving as a way of generate value they are more about uh drop some dudes and attack yeah so one thing which i like to see here is both players have early drops so one drop two drop here from some sector one drop one drop from ruda so it's not gonna be a complete disaster for either player we're gonna see some some combat we're gonna see some some back and forth probably um ruda is missing their fourth land drop so far but might not be that big of an issue at least they have the fight spells they they choose not to play the liberator just keep up mana for maybe an inscription to pump up one of their creatures if they put two creatures yeah. on the pub they might have a, a three four to clean and block the pack leader we'll see if that happens or not yeah he he's trying to set up some trap for uh He's trying to set up some trap for the 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 other opponent, that the mono green player to to fall on it. Mm. And... I'm, I'm I'm feeling that Ruda is starting to fall a little bit behind here, just not having those those big creatures, just putting two counters on a creature last turn. Here he can use the the window where uh, Sekker is tapped out to kill a creature, which is nice. But now we're gonna see, you know, troll attacking in, and and the good thing for Sekker is they still have two removals to use, and they have the upper hand on the battlefield right now. Yeah, uh, the creatures that Sekker draw, uh, the the werewolf pack leader and the old growth troll are the 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 true key cards for the mono green matchup, and we can see how uh, much of value they generate, how much of. Uh, uncomfortable situations they put the opponent oftenly and yeah we we are seeing uh here the the pressure of second mm. he just has a, a better opening uh i do think the draws from ruda's side were a bit of shallow 
because uh, Ascendant Pack Leader is a creature that I don't think it trades really well on the mirror match because it, it, it's hard yeah. to get it pumped and the one toughness makes it even when it pumps uh, not really a great creature to trade with the opponent and okay he, he just set a, a good battlefield with Werewolf Pack Leader and the Liberator but uh, I would not say he's a he's on a great shape right now. I think he would like to see an untapped land maybe to to be able to cast a kicked uh, inscription. We'll see if that happens. No, we just have another pack leader here. Yeah, and we have okay. flipped. We have flipped the uh, we have flipped the the werewolf here into a three three, which is nice. Helps a little bit to have more board. And are we gonna see attack with? Just okay. It looks like just the the back leader. No. Yeah, he has to draw a card. I don't think just with the pack leader. Would yeah. Be nice. But I, I would definitely uh, not play the pack leader before attacking because he could draw a land. And that's exactly what happened. And now he doesn't have the inscription mm. of a bonus open. I mean, just the full modes. And since he's yeah. on ten life and a bit of behind on the the. The race damage. Uh, I would like to have it open if possible. Yeah, you just kind of he just kind of limited his options a little bit by by choosing to play the verbal first, and then it doesn't really help with the attack, and then you just limit your options post attack. So that was maybe not optimal, but didn't really cost him that much, I guess. In the end, looks like the game is starting to be pretty close here. Definitely, Ruda a bit under pressure here with six life only, but they have a decent board here. And they still have the important... I mean, both players have the inscription, so we'll see who can use their inscription better. I think now yeah. would be a good time for Ruda to play it because um, they will have five mana available and maybe the shields are a bit down here. It's easy for us to say because we know that there's no Snakes can veil, but he doesn't know that. He, he, he might be thinking, oh, do they have the Snakes can veil or not? But they seem to be just going for it. Yeah, I don't think they can afford to play around it. Also, uh, I'm not sure, uh, at least myself, I, I'm not a big fan of Snake Skin Veil on the Mirror match, because I, I don't mm. think that extra toughness or sometimes yeah. even the prevents from a fight is what really helps you. Uh, I do think board presence and the fights themselves are a bit more important. The game is uh, sometimes goes to a lot of double blocking, so you're not able to really extract the combat trick potential out of it. So um, uh, maybe I will not play around it on, on post board uh, on the mirror match, and especially if I am that behind on game. Yeah, okay, so we are. looks like we are seeing a double block, maybe even a triple block. No, just, just the two creatures. What can Sector here do? They can they can they can do the full mode of this. Put two counters on something, fight something with something. This this might be interesting. Let's see how the what they choose here. But this could be a big play here uh, for Sector. Yeah, he he could just sweep all three creatures if he chooses to fight with the Outlander and put the counters. But he instead sacrificed the Death Touch dude, so mm. he could still have a 6-6 six, six Trample. And that's it, Kuda draws another land, and it's game. We have so uh, Emiliano Bond and his Monogreen deck as the champions of 100 Cash Digitour MTG Arena Alchemy Christmas Special. It's a really big name for a tournament, but it <laughs> was a very... Uh, very fun to, to cover it. 